Tell me about when you first realized something wrong was happening at the mall. So I was at the tent area for the children's cooking competition. I was with the judges and we just heard a lot of screaming and people running outside of the mall onto the rooftop because we were on the rooftop. Mm -hmm. And I heard like distant booms. A and what happened then? One of the presenters from the cooking competition said, it's a bomb blast, everyone run to the corner of the parking lot. So I, I followed everyone, but then I heard more shooting and more booms and I had a feeling whatever this was was not a simple bomb and there was people involved. And so my instinct said, don't go with the crowd, move away from the crowd because the crowd is going to be the most vulnerable place. Mm -hmm. So I actually moved away and hid behind one of the silver kitchen counters that was there. And, and there were people hiding with you? Yeah, so when I first ran to the first counter, um, I actually fell on top of a lady and, and then people fell on top of me. And so our legs were sticking out and as we were here, um, I heard more shooting and then the lady that I was on top of was shot. So she screamed, I've been shot, and there, was, there started to be blood everywhere. What's going through your mind? I mean, were you panicked? Were you thinking yeah. concretely? My first instinct was I was very shaky and very panicked, but then I thought, like, I need to focus and I need to assess the situation and figure out what I need to do. And in my head, I was thinking, like, there needs to be an answer to this. So for me, it was like, this is not it. I need to keep on thinking and find a way out. And so I'm behind the counter, and it's actually around this time that I see my friend, Aleem, and I see him get up and go like this. And that's all I see. I don't hear him say anything. I just see him go like this, and I see him walk away. He put his hands up. Yeah, he put his hands up. So I was thinking, oh my goodness, if, you, if I surrender, if I apologize, or if I do whatever, I could be free. And so I was actually preparing myself to be the next one to surrender. Um, and then another woman did it before me, and I saw her do this and get up, and then, they, and then she was shot. So they actually shot a, a woman whose hands were up who was surrendering? That's what I saw. I saw her being shot, yeah. And then what? And then they shot into the crowd again, and they actually shot one of the gas canisters. And that's when it blew up. And that's actually when I remember incurring my injuries. So I said, okay, I've been shot, but that's okay because I knew that I was fine. I was still being able to run. And had you actually been shot, or was that from uh, a shrapnel from the gas can? Uh, later, we found out it was shrapnel. Mm. And so I ran to the next kitchen counter. It was me and this couple. And the husband of the couple was, had already been shot. He was laying on the ground bleeding, and the wife was against the counter, and then I joined them. And as they were shooting to the crowd, again, they then she was next to be shot. So she started bleeding. And then it was the so three was of us. It, so her husband was shot, and then she got shot. And, I, and then I, I, I thought I was shot at this point. And I remember her looking at me and saying, are we going to die? And that it was actually the first time when I was thinking to myself, I think we are. And I told her, I think we are going to. And I started... You said that to her? Yeah. And you, you really thought this was it? Yeah, at this point, it was kind of this weird dichotomy where I was thinking, yes, I think I'm going to die, and I have to prepare for it, and I don't want to freak out or stress out about this, but at the same time, it, I was thinking, I can't die. And my brother was the first person I thought of, and then my sister, then my mother, and everyone else, and I said, this cannot be it. it it's hard for you to hear this, isn't it? Very hard. Yeah. Did you see what was happening on TV? Did you know that she was there? Uh, my older daughter, she told me, I thought, it's a dreaming, you know, I thought can be. She told me her sister got shot. I said, oh my God, you know. I almost packed out and said, can be helping my daughter, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I said, it happened to her. I don't think I can live, you know? <laughs> Thank you, yes, she's okay. She's very strong. You raised a very <laughs> strong daughter. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> So you're, you're, you're sitting there with a woman who's been shot, uh, her husband who's been shot as well, and you say to them, you, I, I think we may die. And then I just thought, okay, my next thing to do right now is just to pretend that I'm dead. And so I just laid, um, and I made it a point to lay towards where the shooting was happening because I still wanted, one, to have like, eyesight and vision in case I needed to see what was happening, and two, I didn't want to be shot in my back because I didn't want to be paralyzed if I needed to run. How did you get out of the, the last location you were in? After some time, I think like seven minutes or ten minutes, 
I see another man walk by and he actually passes me because I actually think he thinks I'm dead. And I get up and I say, what's going on? He says, people are going downstairs. Then I see a Kenyan police officer and I see people going down the stairs and running out. So I follow them and then we go out to this lobby area and the door is open and I am still very frightened to even run with, you know, run out of the door. But then I see people running and running and I don't hear gunshots. So I'm thinking, this is safe. So I start going and I start running. And that's when the lady in the picture that has been posted about me, that's when her name is Henna. That's when she approached me and said, are you okay? Because she saw that I was alone and that I had been hurt. When you see that, that photo yeah. that was taken of you now, what do you think? I go back and forth between like, was I really there or? Because when I talk about it, I talk about it like, sometimes like I'm very removed from the situation. Mm -hmm. But when I see the photograph and other photos of victims or people that I knew, that's when I realized I was there. So it actually puts me back, um, which I actually think at this point is a good thing because I think removing myself too much at this point so early is probably not healthy for my mind. But that's how I've been coping with it, mm. um, is to actually make it seem like it's removed from me. W would as you well. want to go back? I do, definitely. I do want to go back. I don't know when, but I definitely do. I consider it my second home. So it hasn't changed the way you feel about, about Kenya? It's, if anything, it's, it's increased the love that I have for the country mm. and for the people, especially like my close friends and, and co-workers in Nairobi.